Hey guys, this is Kev Ryan, and this is actually not a battle report, but is instead a video follow-up to a question asked in the IGL Discord. And that question is, what is a null deployment? Now, I think it was Cattledet who asked this question, and they also supplied these three hand-drawn pictures to provide context to the question. And I had not personally thought about the question of null deployment in the context of these pictures, so I wanted to make a video and talk about it. Let's start out by talking about the first picture here in the top. You have a infinity board um, with, I think these are some buildings. This is the center line. And then over here you have a mock deployment, looks like from either a Yujing or maybe an invincible army player. Obviously not everything is present. Uh, an invincible army player would have more than five models, but we have enough on the board to clarify that this is not a null deployment. Specifically, you have a Yan Huo up here. That's probably the Neurosynetics ARO profile. There's a Haidao sniper here, and then there's a TR bot there. And as we can see, all three of these troopers have pretty decently long lines of fire. You know, the Yan Huo can really see into the opponent's deployment zone pretty heavily. The TR bot is really commanding a lot of the approaches as well. And, um, you know, I don't know why the Haidao is looking along this particular axis, but even they do have some access into the enemy deployment zone. Um, and they're also, you know, watching along this way as well. Not everyone on the board is in ARO. You've got these two guys here, which I imagine are part of the Hideout's link team. But there is nevertheless a significant chunk of points and an even more significant chunk of SWC being spent standing up there watching lanes as far back as the enemy deployment zone. And yeah, I would pretty much agree that that is not a null deployment. But what about these two bottom cases, null number one and null number two? As we'll talk about in a second, these two cases are fairly different from each other. And the question that Cattledat was asking is, which of these two is the true null deployment, if any? The right-hand side is probably the easiest, um, so I'll go ahead and start there. In the right-hand side, we see that basically everything is in the deployment zone, and basically everything is either prone on top of buildings or hiding behind buildings. And as a result, basically nothing in no deployment number two has any line of fire outside of their own deployment zone. I mean, I guess you could technically argue that this guy, as it's drawn, has this line of fire, but I'm going to infer by the lack of arrows drawn in this picture that these lines of fire that look like they're present, you know, aren't intended to be there. So yeah, no deployment number two, Everyone's in the DZ, and we've done everything we can to minimize line of fire of our troopers outside of the DZ. This is compared with null deployment number one. Now, null deployment number one does have some troopers that should be on ARO duty. We have two heavy rocket launcher troopers. Heavy rocket launchers are traditionally an ARO weapon because they are fairly cheap, have decent bands, but they don't have enough active turn burst to be a reliable, you know, active turn weapon against lots of targets. Now, we have these ARO pieces, but their lines of fire are very limited. They are not seeing into the enemy deployment zone, which would be over here. And in fact, they aren't even seeing past the midline of the board. Likewise, we do have troopers that are outside of the deployment zone. We've got some uh, skirmishers here, skirmishers here. Maybe these are Morans or, you know, Guilangs or something like that. There's a forward deploying warband. Maybe this is a Krakot. And there is a mine up here, which is really just out there and completely exposed. But everything of value outside the DZ is positioned fairly safe. The skirmishers are prone on top of rooftops. And this warband is pretty far back, pretty close to the DZ, looking mostly left and right. If I'm interpreting this picture correctly, I don't think there's a way for the warband to be seen, you know, until you've gotten pretty close to the friendly deployment zone. So that's null deployment question mark number one. And the question that Cattledet was asking is, which of these two are null deployments? Now in the Discord, I think pretty much everyone would agree that null deployment number two is definitely a null deployment. But I think we also kind of felt like null deployment number two is probably not a particularly good deployment. There was virtually no way to contest a fast attack trooper running all the way across the board like this, and once he gets there, he's going to have plenty of orders to start eating up your troopers, which, because they're all crammed in the DZ like this, are going to be fairly bunched up. It's not hard to imagine extending number two to have some skirmishers in the midfield prone on buildings. Maybe you've got some zero hackers. Maybe you've got some Morans with their repeaters. 
But even with that small amount of stuff in the midfield, you're still not going to be able to stop something from tearing through straight to your DZ and then attacking your army. And it is, I suspect, the danger of something like this attacking that motivates null deployment number one as being raised. And the answer in the Discord that people provided is that null deployment number one also, yes, deserves to be called a null deployment. It's true that you have some troopers on arrow, like this heavy rocket launcher, and like this rifle even has some decent uh, lines of sight into the midfield. But anything of your opponents that has to start in the deployment zone is going to have to get pretty far forward before he can start drawing line of fire on these potential arrow troopers. You'll have to get past the midfield line before you can see this rifle. You're going to have to get really close to the deployment zone before you can see this warband, and so on. There is nothing contesting your opponent's ability to run up to the midline. There's not going to be anything contesting uh, impetuous warbands from advancing and throwing smoke. But the mines and the limited arrow after the midfield line are going to slow down things like bears or bikes that don't really want to get shot at. But it was for this reason that people felt like null deployment number one was a better deployment. For my part, I actually think you could go further and still be a null deployment. You can imagine taking these heavy rocket launchers and extending them so that they see a little bit further. Maybe this guy sees, you know, past the midfield line, but in a limited capacity. Maybe you have something cheap and disposable, like a war core or a TR bot sitting on top of this building and watching, you know, long lines of fire and contesting more locks from running up and throwing smoke. Depending on the map, depending on the matchup, this slightly more aggressive air road deployment might be a good idea, and it might still be worth categorizing that as a null deployment. Likewise, people in the Discord felt like putting this Warcore up just completely on aero duty, very much not null deployed himself, wasn't enough to tip the balance and make this a non-null deployment. So, based on that context, I would like to talk about null deployment in the context of individual models first, and then an entire list second. So, based on this context, I'd like to talk about null deployment, first for individual models, second for the list in general. In my opinion, an individual model is null deployed if you make it very order intensive for your opponent to get access to that model. In this screenshot, which is of my opponent's deployment in the recent IGL Season 7 Round 4, we have two troopers who are very, very classically null deployed. Uh, which is the line Kazakh, who is here, and then the bear pode controller, who is there. You basically can't get more null deployed than these guys. They are both on top of these buildings, and there are some fairly tall, fairly long pieces of cover which are protecting them from the likely angles of attack. Anyone hoping to shoot these guys is going to have to get around that cover, and unless they've got the ability to, you know, super jump up here, they're probably also going to have to climb on top of the building to shoot them. Even if there were a trooper with climbing plus or super jump that wanted to go kill this guy, it's still fairly order intensive to have to walk around this long piece of cover. Someone like Norkius could well have to spend one order walking to here, one order walking into CC and eating this guy, and then one more order, uh, you know, maybe two inches or something like that, going out of this spot and finding his next victim. And it is for these reasons that this model is very much null deployed. However, I think null deployment is a spectrum. The Lime Kazakh and the Polaris controller are the most null deployed, but you have troopers like this Scotsguard and the Unknown Ranger who, while still pretty darn hidden, don't have the building giving them that extra defense. Moving on up, we have troopers like the uh, Bear Pode over here, there's a Grunt over on this angle, and I think this is a Metro. These guys are further forward, and they are quite a bit more exposed to shooting, especially if I could get someone over to this position, for example. Continuing on, this Bear Pode actually has a very open line of fire shooting him from this position. And we have uh, this Chasseur is on the building, he has some lines of fire, and this is actually a Foxtrot Sniper who's just absolutely standing there, you know, seeing the majority of my deployment zone. Meanwhile, Usha is sitting in this building right next to my deployment zone, hard to see, but pretty darn close to my troopers. Clearly, not everyone is as null deployed as that line Kazakh, but the principle of forcing your opponent to spend orders before they can kill your troops is very much on display for everyone here. Moreover, aside from this Foxtrot Sniper, 
I don't think that any of the long-ranged lines of fire which are present are there because my opponent actually wants to use them. Usha is present over here so that she can go push this button and so that she can go do some work if I decide to leave her there. This bear pod is exposed, but I mean, where else is he going to be? If he's here, then he's going to be visible from this line of fire and this line of fire. There simply aren't that many spots in the deployment zone. This chasseur, it will turn out I can get line of fire on if I stand on some of my own buildings. But that is a gap in the armor of the deployment, not an intentional, you know, arrow of a chasseur onto rooftops. What I'm trying to get at is... With the exception of one cheap sniper, Jay Mustang has tried to make it as inefficient as possible for me to get access to his troopers. Each individual trooper is as null deployed as practical, and key linchpin pieces like the bear pods, like the unknown ranger, and like the lieutenant, are spread out enough that if I go through and kill one or two, I will not have easy access to the rest and thus the ensemble becomes what I would consider a very effective null deployment. Yes, you do have Usha very forwardly deployed right there, but it will take me orders to walk over and discover her, and when I do, she'll hit me with a boarding shotgun. Yes, similarly, there is a Foxtrot sniper on very much active ARO duty, but this guy is cheap, and having to discover shoot this guy could be inefficient and potentially order-consuming, because he has mimetism, and he has marker state, and he's not close to any of my guys. So, is Jay Mustang's deployment a good example of null deployment? I would say absolutely yes. It turns out that this game was top table for IGL Season 7 America Edition, and in my opinion, the quality of this deployment is exactly what you should expect at top table. I will basically only kill this Foxtrot and this Chasseur on my first turn. Which, in a mission like Cryogenics that favors going second, proves that my opponent's null deployment did a really good job. Paired with that, I'd like to show you something that is very much not a null deployment. Which is the position that my troopers were in at the end of my first turn. Right, this is so much not a null deployment that it's not even a deployment. Having failed to break the back of his army on turn one, I felt like I needed to blunt his counterattack as much as possible, and that the best way to do that was by having lots of people on active ARO. You have a flash pulse bot standing right here watching Usha. You have a Myrmidon officer also watching Usha. You have Oideros up here who has line of fire down this angle and also down in this direction. You've got Phoenix who's just standing on top of this building seeing everything. Ajax is also on top of this building. He's prone so Phoenix can see over him, but he can still see a lot. McKeon, my lieutenant and the link leader, is uh, trying to be as safe as he possibly can, but even he will have line of fire on this position and thus be able to shoot the bear pod as it comes around the corner. This Myrmidon is standing. This Flash Pulse is uh, moved out, I think, to see this line. There's a war core here, and so on. If I had to take that not a deployment and compare it to these three pictures, I would absolutely say that this looks like deployment picture number one. Even so... The principle of requiring my opponent to spend orders before he can threaten me is very much at play. Obviously, a lot of my troopers are still null deployed. Akmon, Pandora, this Probot, this Missile Launcher Bot. Even this Flash Pulse, which has some ARO duty, is also fairly safe from long-range fire. I'm also noticing that my opponent's key threats are Bear Pods and the Unknown Ranger. Bear Pods need to be in melee to be threatening. And so I have chosen to put as many of my guys standing on top of buildings as I can. If the bear pods want to kill them, they're going to have to climb up those six inch tall buildings, which is going to give me chances to dodge, and moreover, it's going to cost orders. At the same time, everyone that's on active aero duty, with basically the exception of this Myrmidon, has either multiple wounds or is in group two. If my opponent chooses to use the Unknown Ranger to shoot at guys like Oderos or Phoenix, he may win the face-to-face, -face, and he may put a wound on them, but he will have to spend a fair number of orders walking up to get in good range, and after he gets the chance to shoot, he's not likely to kill anyone in one order. I can thus fail guts to safety afterwards, and voila, I am in a null deployment again. All of which is to say, even though my position is about as far away from a null deployment as you could get, the principles of null deployment 
like forcing your opponents to spend lots of orders before you can shoot at people, like being on top of buildings and prone, like managing your lines of fire, are nevertheless very much in play. So to answer the question, what is null deployment? I would say that null deployment is a characteristic of an individual model's position that seeks to maximize the number of orders it takes before your opponent can shoot or stab them. An army is likewise null deployed if the opponent has to spend lots of orders before he can threaten the backbone of that army, be it the cheerleaders or maybe an expensive soloist like the Unknown Ranger. Moreover, these expensive soloists are separated from each other enough that if an opponent does manage to kill one, they won't have good access to the others. Finally, even with positions like this one that are very much not null deployments, the principles of null deployment are still at play. Understanding those principles and incorporating them into gameplay is very much a hallmark of top tier infinity play. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you around.